Well, I got a, I got a question about this now. So, because um, oxygen is carried uh, on blood cells. So if you have like uh, impediment of blood flow, like some diabetic patients have, does it increase blood flow? Is that what it does? Like capillary expansion or how does, how does your system work exactly? Well, uh, okay. So the, that's what everybody thinks. The reality is that there are multiple oxygen transport vectors in the blood. Now, LIVO2, actually, you know, everybody thinks about hemoglobin and hemoglobin is what the medical textbooks talk about as the primary transport. The reality right. is the water that carries the hemoglobin is actually more important or it's more vulnerable to, to loss. So if you think about a fish, what do fish breathe? Fish breathe Oxygen. water. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Oxygen in the water, right? Exactly. So what LIVO2 does is it hypersaturates the water portion of the blood which goes everywhere. So if you have a capillary that's, you know, been injured or, you know, had a, what we call a tourniquet injury, what happens is if you put a tourniquet or you stall blood flow to a set of tissues for more for 90 minutes or so, it causes tourniquet injury, which is an inflammation in the inside of the capillary. And right, once the right. capillary gets that injury, it's too small for any blood cells to go through. Okay, but plasma will still go through. So what we do with the combination of exercise, hypoxia switching to hyperoxia, is that we activate the respiratory process, high heart rate, low oxygen concentration, which causes vasodilation. We get the body spun up, and then we throw a switch and we super oxygenate, or we put super, you know, a, a very high concentration of oxygen in the lungs, which super saturates the oxygen. So if you think about it in the fire hose me metaphor, what we're doing is we're using the water in the blood, we're using the heart and lungs to supercharge and super squirt that plasma hard and fast through the vascular system so that when it hits those occluded or injured capillaries, the plasma squirts through and once you get enough pressure with enough oxygen, those capillaries open up. So like in my presentation, what we discovered is a big percentage of the loss of cognitive function post injury in the brain is actually a result of you know a bruise where the brain where you have a concussion the brain gets squished up against one side that damages the vascular structure so when we set up this circuit with the brain o2 protocol we activate the blood flow to the brain and we supersaturate the blood and it basically pushes through and opens the capillary beds so that when somebody recovers or when they have the hypoxic recovery, it's actually permanent. We've tested the, you know, we've got about 28 people that we've done this particular protocol and we've been tracking them. Uh, our very first person that we discovered it on, well, I should say second because Dakota was the first, uh, we, we gave her a neurological panel four years after and she still retained all of the brain function she gained in the first week. Wow, that's impressive. And you have you have those studies? Yeah, that's part of what I'll I'll be presenting. It's a series of about 28 case studies. You know, last year we did a group of I think seven people, you know, over a 5-day program. Um everybody doesn't respond immediately because a lot of people are deconditioned so that they can't really activate that circuit. But once yeah, you get sure. to, to the point where they can work out hard enough to get the blood flow to the brain, then then any part of the brain that's not working well because of insufficient oxygenation usually starts or, you know, really fires right up. I mean, that's fascinating to me. So it's almost like a mechanical effect on the, on the capillary itself, like pushing it through mechanically. And what is it that is pushing through the oxygen or, or, or what, like, how does it cause the crimping of the artery to expand? Well, it's not really a crimping. The, the, the mechanism of injury is hypoxia. Okay, so whenever you have a trauma, what happens is that, and if you, like, the, the biggest one is agglutination. So everybody's looked at Rouleau and these formations that you get in, you know, if you're subject, if you've ever looked, have you looked at your blood through a, a dark field microscope? <laughs> not, not in a little while, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, the point is, you know, you'll look at the blood and the blood clumps up. Okay, right. so if you experience a toxin or a stress event that causes a blood clumping, if your blood stays sludged for 90 minutes, what will happen is those clumps will basically clog the entrances 
to the vascular I, system. I, I, so once you get that clog there, anything downstream of that will go hypoxic until the body can break up the clog. If that clog stays present for 90 minutes, then what will happen is it will cause a durable injury to the endothelium downstream mm -hmm. of that clog. So once you have that endothelial injury, you'll end up with swelling on the inside of the pipe, and the pipe will swell. But if you swell the inside of a pipe, the functional cross-section of the pipe will shrink. And once that happens, if it shrinks below the functional diameter of the bending erythrocyte or red blood cell, then the red blood cell won't go through that capillary anymore. It will shunt around. So what happens is as we grow older and we have stress events, parts of our bodies get shut down. So if you take a look at, well, how much energy people lose as they age, uh, age-related loss of brain function, a lot of that loss is actually due to the accumulation of this capillary inflammation that shuts down parts of exactly. our bodies. Okay, so I was what was talking to somebody about this yesterday, capillary inflammation, but please go ahead. So what we're doing with LIVO2, we're supersaturating the water part of the blood or the plasma so that there's enough oxygen dissolved in the plasma. So if you've got this closed off capillary, the water will right, still right, go right, through. Right. Right, 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 right. Manfred von Arden, the guy that developed oxygen multi-step therapy, discovered that if you can get four time or four partial pressures of oxygen in the plasma and get it to go through these little holes, it will immediately reverse the inflammation that was established by the hypoxia. So kind of makes sense. Low oxygen causes injury, high oxygen causes recovery. This mechanism of recovery is immediate. It happens in seconds. But you have to get the superoxygenated plasma to where the injury is. And that's why you need the activity, the superoxygenation, the high heart rate. And that's why our technique of doing switching between low and high oxygen is so effective because it's the first time I think it's been done. And, we, and, and so when we do that with people that have had brain injury or whatever, what you see is recovery speeds that are just ridiculous when you compare them to like hyperbaric or anything else. Like, so we'll see more results in 15 minutes than people will get with uh, two months worth of hyperbaric. Wow, I did not training. understand how that worked and you just explained it so eloquently. That's, that's amazing. Is this a device that you're marketing to, to doctors? that they use in their office or do they come to your your location and get oxygenated? How does it work? What we tried to do and when I was designing this, I said the place this needs to be is at home. So I designed the system as an at-home workout. So you pair it with any piece of workout equipment. You can use it in a chiropractor's office. Uh, so it can be good for your patients, but a lot of times people get tired of coming to your office to work out. So we packaged it as an at-home add-on to, to a workout system. 